James Gunn. Oh, he comes up in the uh, in the news a whole bunch here. What 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 is this? Oh my god! He said he wanted to go younger. Oh, so we got like that. That's he just cast. That's the official photo from the movie. Come on. For those of you who don't know, Ray is responsible for putting together the graphics. The pop up. He said he wanted to go younger. Oh my god. <laughs> Try doing this whole segment. <laughs> I think it just winked. That baby's so intense. Oh my god. That is, is an angry Robert looking baby. Dookie. What's happening? Yeah, that is a sad, serious I baby. Lie. I would watch it. Come on. All right. <laughs> Trying to regather my thoughts here. So James Gunn. He uh he's of course now the head of DC Studios along with Peter Safran. And we know they got a Superman movie, and he's very, very active on social media and all that kind of stuff. Well, he recently did an interview where he actually dropped and started talking about like three very significant things all in one kind of interview where he basically was talking about, uh, you know, Superman's tone compared to Guardians of the Galaxy's tone, talking about the challenges of making a good MCU movie after the blip and stuff like that. He actually went through several really interesting things. Now, one of the things that a lot of people are kind of concerned about when it comes to his upcoming Superman movie, of course, James Gunn is not only the head of the studio, he's written and will be directing Superman Legacy, the first movie of the new DC that's coming out in 2025. And so one of the things that a lot of people, or some people have had some concerns about is, hey, James Gunn's great, but I don't really know that I want a Guardians of the Galaxy feel to a Superman movie. Guardians of the Galaxy feel works great for Guardians of the Galaxy. But will it work for Superman? Not so sure. Well, that's the first thing he addressed in this. So take a look at this. He goes, the first thing he kind of covered was Superman on the Guardians of the Galaxy. And he said this, the writer director recently told Rolling Stone that his Superman movie is not going to feel like a Guardians movie. I learned so much, he said, from making these movies, Gunn said about his Marvel franchise, but it's not like Superman is going to have exactly the same vibe as a Guardians movie. It's actually quite different. It's actually quite different. Now, I think it's kind of important that he come out and say that like right off the bat, like years before this movie comes out and just put it out on the table. This is not going to be Guardians of the Galaxy with Superman. Superman is not going to have the sense of humor, personality, all that kind of stuff of Peter. He's not going to be Star-Lord. He's not going to be Drax. It's going to be different. And I, again, I think it was important for him to lay that out because as a massive James, James Gunn fan, as a massive fan of Guardians of the Galaxy, I don't want Superman to feel like Guardians of the Galaxy. I want it to have some lighthearted humor like the classic Superman movies did. I absolutely want that, but I just want to make sure it doesn't just feel like Guardians of the Galaxy with a Superman wrapper on it. You know what I mean? So I think it's key that he addressed that. The next thing he kind of talked about was talking about the challenges of making MCU movies after the blip. And I'm glad he brought this up because it's something I think that has kind of hovered over everything since phase four. But anyway, he said this. He said, I really want Marvel to keep making good movies, Gunn said about his exit. I think it's really hard in the wake of the blip. There's this worldwide, universe-wide event that happened. And in truth, everybody would be stark raving mad at this point. So it's hard to write stories in the wake of that, which is why the Guardians movies have been easier because they're set outside of that a little bit. And I am so glad he addressed this because I think it was Falcon and the Winter Soldier. They kind of touched on it a bit that, listen, the world where half humanity suddenly disappears the Avengers Endgame at the beginning did a pretty good job of kind of painting what the world has been like. And it's been hard. And it's been like everybody lost loved ones. And the world was dark now and gray and all that kind of stuff. What Falcon the Winter Soldier touched on a little bit is what kind of chaos would be, you know, come to life if after several years of half the population being gone, if all of a sudden three and a half billion people suddenly reappeared in the world. And while it touched on it a little bit, I think really the MCU has kind of glossed over that thing. I mean, the world would honestly, the entire world would be in chaos for years, for absolute years. And 
I'm really glad James Gunn was pointing out. It's like, listen, it's, it's hard. And I think that's probably why Marvel has kind of skipped addressing it much because you can't start to address it without it kind of becoming the dominant theme of any story you're trying to tell that it would take an awful long time for them to get over this. And so, and I also like the fact that he says, I got lucky, Mike, the guardians of the galaxy kind of lives away from that. They don't have to be on earth and dealing with that kind of stuff. So that was pretty good of, uh, to hear from him on that too. The third thing that gun discussed, which I think is very, very relevant to today because it kind of came up a little bit on open mic yesterday. James Gunn decided to directly address the topic of superhero or comic book movie fatigue when he talked about this. He said, I think there is such a thing as superhero fatigue, Gunn told Rolling Stone. I think it doesn't have anything to do with superheroes, though. It has to do with the kind of stories that get to be told. And if you lose your eye on the ball, which is character, we love Superman, we love Batman, we love Iron Man, because they're these incredible characters uh, that we have in our hearts. And if it becomes just a bunch of nonsense on screen, it gets really boring. I love that he addressed this because I didn't read this until after we did the show, the open mic show yesterday, and somebody brought up the question of superhero fatigue. And one of the things that I had said on the show was, listen, ever since I started doing this almost 20 years ago, in June or July is going to be 20 years that I since I started my first blog called The Movie Blog. And ever since I started The Movie Blog back in 2003, every year, the question is, comic book movie fatigue, superhero movie fatigue, comic book movie fatigue, every single year, and every single year proves that there's not. And that I believe it is not a coincidence that the only reason that, or that the fact that some people are starting, more people starting to bring up the concept of superhero fatigue, it's not a coincidence that that's happening as superhero movies have kind of lost a bit of their quality. And what I said on the show yesterday, and I think this is what James Gunn is saying as well, is that this has nothing to do with the genre. It has to do with mediocrity. People are not getting tired of the genre. People are getting tired of mediocrity. Because... In ages past, just a couple of years ago, as seven out of every 10 comic book projects that would come out were awesome, nobody talked about, not seriously anyway, fatigue. Everybody predicted fatigue was coming, but nobody talked about fatigue. Now, where it's kind of a contest, you know, maybe five out of 10 are good, maybe four out of 10 are good or whatever. Now we hear people talking because it's not about the genre. It's about mediocrity. And I think that's why I said... I think Guardians 3 comes out and kills it. And then I care. And if Flash comes out and is great, I don't think you're going to hear a lot of talk of comic book movie fatigue again. I, I am completely with, with uh, James on this one, talking about how it's, it's, look, it's when movies, it's when you make a comic book movie that's not great, that doesn't have good story, that doesn't have interesting characters, that doesn't, have, when you miss the part of making the movie part of comic book movie, and you just focus on comic book, then you get into the weeds a bit. So yeah, I thought some really interesting things here from Gunn, talking about superhero fatigue, talking about the challenges of Marvel after the blip and all that kind of stuff, talking about the comparisons and how Superman and Guardians are going to be different. Anyway, Chris, you read through what James Gunn was talking about. What of these things are standing out to you the most or makes the biggest impression on you? Oh, his end quote. Um, he writes or says, I get fatigued by most spectacle films by the grind of not having an emotionally grounded story. It doesn't have anything to do with whether they're superhero movies or not. It's the story at the base of it. Just watching things bash each other, no matter how clever those bashing moments are, no matter how clever the designs and VFX are, it gets fatiguing. And I think that's very, very real. And I think that's something that I really want to hit on that he touches on here is, yeah, a lot of these movies are technically executed well. But they're so similar and they're all safe to an extent now, too, in a post blip world of delivering a superhero movie in a very specific kind of way. Guardians was a risk taking Guardians, one, because it's more of a B-side kind of comic book story and a set of heroes that most people didn't know about. But also just the way it was done was very different from anything we'd seen from Marvel at this point. You know, we've seen them try to do this with things like Peacemaker being a very different kind of show. James Gunn is somebody who takes risks. And I think that's something we've kind of missed in the superhero field right now when it comes to filmmaking is really, really exploring character and doing something more interesting with it when having these grounded characters who can do supernatural 
larger than life kind of things. And I think right now these studios have been playing it really, really safe and sanitized. And I'm hoping we kind of get away from some of that and go back more into these more interesting character stories and find something to really dive into there. And I'm so glad he brings up that Superman is not going to be like Guardians of the Galaxy because one, why would it be? Why would it, if that is what you're expecting? You need to go back and read some comics and Superman figure out. Superman has things. a playlist. Oh my gosh, he's got a Zoom too. <laughs> he loves it. You know, it, they're they're very very different, and I think that's another thing we need to understand as well is we can't expect James Gunn to create the same kind of movie over and over again too. I mean, just go look at his oeuvre. If you look at Slither, if you look at other movies, they are so wildly different. If you go back to his trauma days, there's such a, a wide catalog of what he does. And so I think to place him in a kind of cookie carton or superhero movies as a whole in that kind of carton is a disservice to them. So hopefully we all can broaden our expectations and have some really cool movies made. I'm going to just point about character and story. Even go back to his most recent uh, Gar not Guardians, uh, Suicide Squad movie, right? We're talking about creating character moments and story. There are like two moments that really stand out to me amidst all the bonkersness, like when, you know, Peacemaker and Idris Elba are walking through having a, a kill off. How, who, who can kill as many people in the most creative ways possible, right? In the midst of all that bonkersness though, two moments really stand out to me. There's this moment where they're driving through town and King Shark is in the van and King Shard is just looking out the window, a character who does not or barely speaks. And yet they do this quick moment where he's looking out a window and he sees a couple holding hands and cuddling together, leaning against a building as they're driving by. And then the camera just goes back to King Shark's face. And I remember I got choked up. There's no dialogue, no lines, nothing. And I felt like they just did what a lesser filmmaker would have taken a 10 minute sequence to do to explain and convey. And I felt like we were understanding King Shark as a character and his heart and his emotions and his feeling and what he's longing for and all in a moment. Another thing in that movie is how beautiful was the story of Ratcatcher 2 oh, with her dad. So good. Right? Her, her drug addicted dad who loved her anyway. And you know, that, like who didn't get choked up on that? It's it's this is the strength of James Gunn to be able to do this ridiculous bonkersness and within that bonkersness have these beautiful character centric story driven things that really become the engine of the stories he's trying to tell. And if he can bring that aspect to Superman, I think we're in for something really cool. Anyway, guys, the question is for you. What did you think about this interview with James Gunn talking about the challenges with Marvel, talking about the difference between Superman, talking about comic book fatigue. What stood out to you? Whatever you guys think, jump down to the comment section below and let us know your thoughts. We want to take a second to thank a sponsor of this video, Mint Mobile. If saving more and spending less is one of your top goals for 2023, why are you still paying insane amounts of money every month for your phone bill? Switching to Mint Mobile is the easiest way to save this year. As the first company to sell premium wireless service online only, Mint Mobile lets you order from home and save a ton with phone plans starting at just 15 bucks a month. You guys know I made the switch over to Mint Mobile a while ago. The process couldn't have been easier and I can't believe that I am spending less than a third of what I was spending on one of the other major carriers before. By going online only and eliminating the traditional costs of retail, Mint Mobile passes the significant savings on to you. All plans come with unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. Use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily in minutes with eSIM. To get your new wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door free, go to mintmobile.com slash campia that's mintmobile.com slash campia cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash campia